today we're going to be going over setting up pro till in the field for the first time. The pro tills that we're going to be focusing on are the 20 foot and the 26 foot. Uh, some things that we'll be showing you how to set for the, when you go to the field is your depth stops, uh, your shield, your uh, gauge wheels, and then you'll be ready to go to the field. After you have the pro till hooked up to the tractor, you want you need to hook up your hydraulics. We've labeled the hydraulics on our hydraulic tree with which uh, position they're supposed to go into on the uh, tractor. So you you open up the tree, grab the ones that say depth, which will control your depth control. Plugging those into the hydraulics. Usually on tractors, they're color coded also with the uh, correct hydraulics. And then you move on to the wings, which is lever two, or hydraulic circuit two. The tra transport cylinders are usually go into the brown one or lever three. And the last one is your jack control. If you have four hydraulics, you can plug it in to the fourth one. And then lastly is your lights, light controls. For going down the road, you have your blinkers and flashers available then. So that's, that's hooking up the hydraulics of the Pro Till to the tractor. I usually put them all, all the positives on the left side and negatives on the right side. And then I adjust it after that if my lever controls are working in the correct direction that I uh, want them to when I'm running the Pro Till. So after you have the Pro Till opened up and laying on the ground, you're, you wanna find where zero is and zero being when your discs are just touching the ground. And how that's done, is you take all the take the depth stops and put them all in, so that you you know that uh, that should be pretty close to where zero is. Each one of these depth stops equals about a half inch. If you pull them out, they go down. If you put them in, the machine's depth comes up. There's four different spots to set that uh, to adjust these, and three of them are on the left side. One is on the right side. So after you have them all in then you go back to the tractor to lower them to the ground and make sure your discs are all touching at the same time so on the hydraulics usually your your operation of the pro till is lever one puts your discs in and out of the ground lever two runs your wings um, up and down there's uh, two positions you can run your uh, hydraulics in First one is constant pressure. Second position is uh, float. Lever three is for your transport cylinders and those are always ran in float, which it should click over to stay in that position. On your, on your tractor monitors, you should have a squiggly line underneath a cylinder showing that it's in float. Usually if there's a C, it's in constant. And if there's nothing, it's in neutral. So once I have all the depth stops in, I'm gonna put levers two and three, which is your wing cylinders and your transport cylinders into float. The reason I'm doing this is I'm gonna drive forward a little bit and the pro till should level out As you could see here, the disc blades, front row and back row, are both touching the ground at the same time. Ensuring that they're both touching at the same time uh, is going to give you a better chance of cutting level from uh, front to back um, in the field. Once you've found where zero is on your uh, pro-till, you'll want to raise the machine back up 
so you can start taking depth stops out to know how deep you're going to be going into the ground. So push in the blue button, pull the locking pin out, and start removing depth stops. Each depth stop is equal to about a half inch. So you pull out two is one inch, four is two inches, six is three inches. And replace, you always wanna push this blue button in because there's balls on the end that lock it into place to push it in there, it should be locked. You pull on it, it should be locked in there. So after you've pulled the pro till through the field slowly to get the disc blades to sink into the ground, you need to check, get out of the tractor, come and check your depth on your disc blades. And you simply do that by wiping some dirt away on the back side of the blades. That's the easiest way to check your depth. See if it's going as deep as you want. If you want it to go deeper, pull depth stops out in all four spots. If you want it to go shallower, put depth stops in. Really, you only need to do it a half inch at a time or one depth stop. And you want to check both rows. Uh, so after you've checked the, at the disc blades, you want to come out behind the machine a little ways. And you're just going to wipe away some dirt and just make sure that in the disc tracks that you're going to the depth you want. You are going to have disc tracks going slow and that's just the nature. So you will have to go over the area again when you start going at the speed. You just want to check and say, see that you're going to a depth that you're wanting to achieve. So after you have your initial depth set, you uh, want to put your wings into constant pressure and then you're gonna to wanna to visually check the uh, wing pressure gauge that we have here to make sure that it's uh, right around 1,000 PSI. We preset it from the factory at 1,100 PSI, which is usually really good, but there may have to be adjustments made. To make the adjustments on your uh, pressure gauge is you need to take the tractor out of uh, constant pressure, but then there's a jam nut that you loosen up then you take your Allen wrench and turn the, the plunger valve one way or the other to um, adjust your pressure. So the next thing that we're going to set is our uh, soil deflector. What you wanna do is you wanna uh, drive up to an area in the field and stop, leave the discs in the ground so you know where your cutting depth is and then we can come and adjust the soil deflector. It's a six way adjustable de uh, deflector uh, adjustable fore and aft on the on the pro till, uh, in and out, and the deflector itself is adjustable up and down. One thing to make sure of while you're doing the adjustments is the tail end of the deflector. You want it to be bringing the dirt back around and getting underneath the the roller and back. Whether you have the bar roller like this or the rubber roller. That's all. Oh, that's an uh, option that we have. What you're, the the purpose of the shield is to take the dirt from the front row disc that's throwing it out. It, the shield's trying to catch that and bring it around to fill in the uh, groove made by this outside right disc. When you're making passes through the field, you're you're matching up right sides when you're going down and back. Uh, the purpose of the shield is to catch the dirt that's f coming off of this front row disc. Uh, it, the dirt comes flying off of it into the shield and the shield brings it back around to fill in the trench that's being cut. To make the vertical adjustments on the soil deflector, you need to have a inch and an eighth wrench, inch and an eighth uh, battery impact. What you do is you loosen up the Loosen up the nuts. And the shield should fall down to the ground on its own. You, what I have done to help me out, because I'm usually in the field by myself, is I have a double stacked two by four and a single. And what I do is I put the single one at the back of the shield and the double in the front, because you want the shield running uphill a little bit. And 
and that's just to help me get it set to how I want it. And then I usually have the wrench out just to give it another little turn to make sure that they're tight. So that's how you, what you're wanting to do is you want this shield to be running just above the ground. Uh, you, don't, you don't want it creating its own furrow to make the fore and aft adjustments of the soil deflector. That's done by loosening up uh, these bolts on the outside here. The, the nut is already, is, has, there's a keeper in there of the nuts. So all you have to do is adjust, loosen up the top of this. And you can slide it back and forth depending on what you're thinking needs to be done. To adjust the in and out of the soil deflector, it's done by pulling the cotter key on the back side, pulling the pin out, making your adjustments in and out. When you're done with that, just replace the, the pin and the cotter key. And you should be all set. Mounted on the machine, we've provided a wrench, a double-ended wrench. There's uh, two sizes. The large size is for uh, adjusting the manufacturing tolerance adjustments that we have here. The other side is for adjusting the, the shield. If you happen to forget to bring a wrench with you to the field or a, a battery impact. On every pro till up by the hitch is a operator's uh, manual box. Inside of here we have a quick start guide. Goes over what each uh, hydraulic hose set is supposed to be doing on one side. On the other side, it goes through a lot of the settings that we went over today. Also is the operator and parts manual. This goes more into detail of how to adjust settings if things are going on in, in the field, like maybe the machine's skewing one way or the other. Goes over how to adjust that and check for those type of issues. Uh, so though that comes with every Pro-Till and it's uh, on there. You, uh, what I'd suggest everybody do on the back of the manual is write your serial number, model number, and the date of purchase. Then you know when, uh, when you bought it and how long your warranty is good for.